Today's tutorial is all about this beautiful lavender opal tumbler. And I'm gonna take you through step by step how I made this. I used a base paint and a bunch of opal glitters and everything that I use for the course of this video is linked in the description box below. So if you wanna get it for yourself, check out the links down there. If you are new here, my name is Allison and here on this channel, I post weekly tutorials and do a weekly live stream to help you become a better tumbler maker and crafter. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the new amazing videos I've got coming at you. Start by prepping your cup, whatever method you want. If you need more information on that, I will link a video for you to watch. I used a few different glitters that um, I will link. Also, the supplies list will be down below. So I did a few coats of the lavender flippin' awesome paint to base coast this tumbler, and it is the most beautiful paint. I love the color. To put on the glitter, I am doing a coat of bright tone. You can use your finger or a brush to get it all over the cup. And then I'm adding my chunkiest glitter first. I am doing it in a diagonal pattern, but also kind of random. I went in with this lavender um, opal glitter in the middle of all that chunky, as well as some other random areas. Still in a diagonal pattern, but also very random. Then I went in with a chunky mix that is called Golden Opal, and I also went in with a just a white glitter, my favorite white, which is called Emily's Pearl, and I just kept building with the glitter until I was satisfied. I just went back in kind of with each one of them, and I decided that this glitter that's called Lullaby was like my favorite, so I did a little bit extra of that. So again, this is not supposed to be perfect. Um, it's supposed to be kind of messy. I took my finger to tap down the chunky pieces right away, and then I let this dry for four hours. It's important that you let it completely dry, um, and then when it is fully dry, you can seal it. I'm going to seal it with the glitter glue and use a damp brush to spread it around. It does make it um, very thin, but it makes it so much easier to spread if you use a damp brush. And then once you get it fully covered, you will need to let it dry. You wanna make sure that you get it flattened out um, so that you don't have any like peaks or valleys or anything like that. Um, you just wanna make sure it is super flat. I do like to let it dry on my cup turner because it is so thin with the water. Um, I don't want it to drip at all. So I do let it spin for two hours. And then it is time to flatten. And the way I flatten glitter these days is roll it in parchment paper and use my brayer roller to um, get it super, super flat. You don't need that. Um, you can totally just use your hands on the table, um, but that's what I've been doing, and I really like the process. So once you get it nice and flat, you can start layering your bright tone. You're gonna build your layers. So I'm using a brush here, but you can use your finger as well. But you're gonna do three or four coats of bright tone. Because I have a chunky glitter, I do even sometimes um, do a few more than that just to be extra cautious, but you'll have to kind of play around with it and see what works for you. Remember that you're going to be doing coats every four hours and you're going to do about four, maybe five if you have a chunky glitter um, total before you give it a light sand. And then you'll give it a light sand with 400 grit sandpaper and then you'll keep building. So do three more layers, then sand, three more layers, then sand until you get a smooth surface. There's no set number of how many times you need to do that. You get better and more efficient the more cups that you make. Once your surface is smooth, you can move on to the Milky Way portion of the cup. And what I'm doing is just using these little condiment bottles and with Bright Tone, I'm mixing in first, this is the Galaxy Liquid Mica from the Crystalette Company. And it just super pretty color shift, especially over this lavender. I have just a regular white mica powder um, that I'm just stirring up because I had it mixed from a previous project. Um, just any random white mica powder will do. And then I am, to tie this all together, going to put in a little bit of that lavender paint that I used to base coat the cup. Mix it in with a little bright tone. Again, just to kind of bring this whole cup together. To do the Milky Way, you're going to start with a coat of bright tone. Use your finger or a brush to get your cup fully covered, but you don't want this layer to be too thick. Once your cup is covered, you can start adding your micas, paints, whatever you're using. And I do like my cup to spin towards me. I take a popsicle stick and just randomly put on my mixes in a diagonal pattern. And I'm just kind of alternating colors. It's really very random. And I like to get the cup 
pretty covered, but you don't want to use too much. And that sort of just comes with practice, kind of understanding what's too much and what's not enough. So what I like to do is use a straw to spread out my mixes. Now, I also like to take my finger and kind of drag it in a diagonal pattern to help guide my mixes and then go over those lines with the straw so the lines aren't super harsh. Um, but I just like the way that that combination looks. Now, you want to make sure that you let this fully and completely dry. So once you're satisfied with the way it looks, you can always add more, no worries. Um, let it spin for several hours, like probably four or five hours, and always let it dry at least overnight before you move on. After I do my Milky Way, I do add a few coats of Bright Tone um, before I add my vinyl. Now, I wanted to show you this little trick with the vinyl. Um, because when you're using Crystallite products, you have to um, put it on thin. So it does take several coats of Bright Tone to get a surface over the vinyl that you can't feel. So what I do is I do my offset in Silhouette Studio and then use the subtract feature to subtract out the inside. If you have Cricut Design Space, you're gonna use the slice feature because then this vinyl on the top, I'm using Cotton Candy Opal that I will link down below, it's super pretty. We'll go right in the middle of that offset. And the reason that I do this, I'm gonna show you a little visual in a minute, is to get my vinyl covered faster. So once I get this cut and put it on my cup, you can start your coats of Bright Tone. And remember, it's gonna take several coats for your vinyl to be completely covered to where you can't feel it. Now, once I get it on the cup, I just go ahead and start my bright tone layers right away. Some people like to wait, I just do it right away. And I'm just gonna do three or four coats of bright tone, kinda depends on how much I can get done in one day, but three or four coats of bright tone, four hours apart, and then once you get those on there, let it dry overnight, and then you can give it a light sand. So here's my visual. If you have the vinyl on top of each other versus kind of in between each other, you're bringing down the thickness of your vinyl, right? Instead of two things of vinyl, you just have one. So once you get your few coats on there, do a light sanding over the vinyl only, not the whole cup, mm -hmm. clean it off, and then go ahead and finish up your coats of Bright Tone. There is a chance you will need to sand one more time and follow up with three additional coats, but really depends on your skill level and how well you sand and all of that. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this tumbler. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I personally am obsessed with it and love it. If you want another Milky Way demonstration, watch this video on your screen.